right, we're going to try another Prezi today. And this is sort of an update on the Qing Dynasty, sort of what happened just before this age that we're going to be talking about in the next couple days. It's important to note that the Qing Dynasty is the last dynastic empire in China. And the length of time the Qing are in control of China is 1644 to 1911. So they are considered China's last dynasty. It's important to note that they come from a region in the north of China. And this northern region of China is called Manchuria. So often the Qing dynasty is referred to either a little more American phonetically as Qing or the Manchu. So in the video that we watched in class today, you saw um, the dynasty being referred to as the Manchu because the people who started the dynasty had come from the north or Manchuria. Now they're known for their hairstyle. The British call it the Q. Q is just a word that means line. The way we would say, you know, line up at the door. Um, the, you know, the British would say Q up at the door. So they looked at this hairstyle, which was the front of the head being shaved and this long braid down the back as, as a line, as making a line down the back of the, um, the person's back. And so they said, oh, it's like, like a cue, a line. Um, it is interesting to note that the current borders of China are very similar to the borders of the Qing dynasty, with the exception of this part here, which um, today is Mongolia. Now, I also would like you to make note of the fact that chinoiserie was highly fashionable in England and the British could not get their hands on enough things that were Chinese or in the style of the Chinese. And so there was this huge demand for trade, trade of, you know, things like the vases and you know, hair bows and statues and that kind of thing. So basically, I would also like you to, to know that the word chinoiserie just refers to a style of art and it's based on Chinese motifs basically okay now as the video that you watched in class pointed out the Qing's view of the Europeans was that they were inferior to them so they were like sure come on into China but you guys are inferior we expect you to give us gifts pay tribute and they imposed very strict rules for trade and they limited trade they also expected the British who came to do business in China to kowtow now this kowtow is the, the Chinese custom of touching the ground with your forehead. It's this real sign of respect, but also submission. I mean, you're literally getting down on all fours like you saw um, here in the, in the picture. And, you know, it's not just like the normal British bow or curtsy like they were used to, but you actually had to really get down on all fours and like touch your forehead to the ground. Um, we still use that expression today. If we said, you know, somebody was a kowtow or they kowtow to their boss, it would mean basically by kind of flattering somebody, um, doing whatever they want. Uh, we might even say today, you know, use the expression sucking up to somebody. Um, but a much more polite way to say that would be to, to use the term kowtow, which I encourage you to do. Um, lastly, just keep in mind that these straight trade restrictions limited trade to one city, Canton. Europeans were not allowed to buy Chinese books or learn Chinese languages. Um, certainly Chinese, you know, China prized their education, their mind. They, they felt that that was the most important thing. And so the Europeans were not allowed to, to look at Chinese books or buy them. Of course, the Europeans view themselves as equals. The Chinese view the Europeans as inferior. It should really come as no surprise that there is going to be conflict right around the corner.